for textiles, dresses, each and everything. All these are final cartoons, pack cartoons. And then once that, our labor will come and collect it. We ship up around 15 to 20 parcels in a day. That might exceed to 40 to 50 parcels a day. We have six to seven labors that work only for us, for our three companies. Just for those parcels to get collect from the shop, they carry 15 to 20 parcels on their trolley. There are many trains going in all the cities. Railways go in each and every corner of India. And we use it on a massive scale just because it is quick and it is safe also than other transports. Because by air it is too costly and by roadway it is too slow. There are four to five trains in a day that goes to Delhi. So if another customer from Delhi says that I want a parcel right now, we can ship it in the evening also. The train has uh, roughly around seven to eight bogies of goods only. So roughly around 70 to 80 cartoons can be packed in one bogey. So that brings around 400, 500 parcels a day in one train. Railways is very important because if the railways don't work for one day, my business will be shut for that entire day. This is the good sorting area at CST. Packages come in here from all over the city ready to be shipped out. Now there are 60 porters who work here 24 hours a day, shifting all these bags, sorting them out, making sure they get to their right destination. As you can see, they're fairly big, most of these packages. And you may have noticed there's no forklift trucks around. All this movement is done manually. And when you see the size and the weight of these packages, it's quite extraordinary. That's how they work. Now, all of them, as you can see, not all of them, but a lot of them are sewn into the same wrapping material. They're hand-sewn into this material, and that is mainly to anonymise them. It's so that, say, this bag here could be 10,000 pairs of socks, and this package here could be expensive jewellery, but nobody knows the difference, and that reduces uh, pilfering. Of course, it's not just packages like this. All kinds of things get shipped uh, around the country. Goats, um, not this dog, he just lives here. Um, there's a chair over there, fridges, motorbikes, all sorts of things. And every now and then you can really tell uh, what is in the packages, even though it doesn't necessarily say it on the outside. For instance, I'm very confident that in these packages there's a large amount of fish. That is basically uh, information that's going in through my nose. That is quite an intense smell there. And of course, this is perishable products. This needs to be shipped out as, as quickly as possible. You don't really want to open a package with weak old fish, just as you don't want to open a package with weak old newspapers. So they have to get them there on time. Rail is a cheap and efficient way to send goods around this vast country. Although most of India's freight doesn't travel on passenger trains like these, but on enormous dedicated freight trains. Well, there's no question that freight makes a huge contribution to Indian railways. And I'm lucky enough to be joined now by Mr. Nigam, who is the divisional railway manager here. He used to run this station until early 2015. Thanks for joining us. Just how important is freight for Indian railways? Freight contributes for 70% of our revenues. So freight is extremely important. We run about 18,000 trains every day, out of which about 12,500 are passenger carrying trains and 6,000 trains are running and using the same infrastructure as that of the passenger trains. And does that help to subsidize the passenger travel? Uh, it does. In fact, uh, as 70% of revenues are coming from freight traffic, these revenues are uh, uh, subsidizing the losses that we are making in the passenger traffic. The importance of uh, freight in, on Indian railways is really immense. And what are the main things that these freight trains are carrying? Predominantly, it carries coal and uh, other bulk commodities like iron ore, uh, iron steel, we are also carrying fertilizers. I mean, it, it shows interestingly because, of course, the history of the Indian Railways was exploiting the interior, bringing those goods out from the, the heart of India to the coastal ports, and uh, Indian Railways are still doing that job today. You're very right. You know, in fact, most of our uh, power generation is coal based or thermal based, and coal is produced in the east, whereas most of our Thermal plants, thermal power plants are located in the north and the east. So for the generation of electricity, the role of Indian railways uh, and the freight traffic in particular is extremely important. 
So your trains are literally keeping the lights on. They're powering this economic miracle that's yes. going on in India. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Logan. Fascinating stuff. Now, no trains, passenger or freight, are going anywhere with a very important group of people, the drivers. In fact, they're so important that their salary is about seven times the average salary here in Mumbai. 430 kilometers northeast of Mumbai is the Busavar Railway Training Institute. This is one of nine schools spread across the country where students learn to pilot trains. The 1,200 students learn about locomotive controls and signaling systems. as well as the practical mechanics of locomotives. And it takes a minimum of 12 years of classroom lessons and on-the-job experience before fresher students can pilot a passenger train on their own. I'm being given some accelerated private lessons. First, it's signalling. School principal, Mr. Krishnan, is guiding me through the basics on this rather fantastic model. So this is a, an accurate representation of the, the trains in, in Mumbai? This is a miniature version of the EMU trains that right. run in uh, Mumbai. Responding correctly to signals is essential for loco drivers because the stopping distances of trains are enormous. To bring a one and a half thousand ton long-distance passenger train to a stop can take over a kilometer. The signals are just like traffic lights on roads. Green means go, red means stop, and yellow, slow down. All simple enough, but I'm also expected to understand the theory behind signal control. Automatic block system. The normal aspect of the signal is right. green. As the train approaches the signal, the driver knows that he has to pass with the normal speed. Right. As he passes this signal, the aspect of this signal will turn to red and right. will not allow oh, yeah. the right. subsequent train to enter this signaling section. Right. So then if I was coming in the train behind that one, this is what I would see then, these signals. Yeah. The yellow light, it indicates to the driver, you should be ready to stop at the next signal, which is red. So as you see here, yeah, the signals are controlled by the movement of the train. Right. To allow a very high frequency of trains to run on the tracks around CST, the distance between them can be as little as 400 meters. It's imperative that drivers obey the signals. So if a driver ignores the red signal and keeps going, what happens then? If you pass a signal at red, the auxiliary warning system will automatically apply brakes and put your train to halt. Passing a red light can be, however, a sackable offence. The next step is to learn how to control a locomotive. Thankfully, this isn't on the real thing. The school has a high-tech diesel engine simulator. It has hydraulics to mimic the physical sensations of driving and a video screen showing exactly what the driver sees. This is the train driving simulator. Right, it's very I will show you how to drive the train. My instructor, Mohamed Itzar, is confident I can master the complicated-looking controls quickly. This is the driving seat. This is the driving seat. Yeah, yeah. And there's this the, there's this the, the track. The, yeah. These are the brakes, okay? Right. This brake is for train. Right. And, and this is the independent brake only for the locomotive. Right. So this is for the whole train? The whole, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. And this is throttle. To so accelerate the train. At so present, signal is red. Red. Okay, as soon as the signal will signal become is green, green. Now it's green, now you can start. So First, you have to press the horn. When we start from the station, yeah. public should know. So for that purpose, we are sounding the horn. Now you release the brakes. Now we release the brakes. Okay. Release. Oh, there we go. Okay. 
Another train me. Oh, now it's moving. You can see. Yeah? You can see? Yes. So it's very gentle. The passengers sitting inside. They don't want they to should be not feel around. a jerk. Right. This kind of train has a maximum speed of 110 kilometers per hour. Present, we are running at a speed of 58 km. 58 km. We have to watch the track. We and have the, to watch the, the signal signals as well as the, as well as the speed. speed. It's all rather overwhelming, and there are also the complicated gauges to keep my eye on as well. These monitor brake pressure and engine power. We're coming up to a station uh, now, now. we are going through a station, no? Then, right. then also we have to sound okay. this whistle. It right. is a warning for them that move away from the track. So if I did need to stop now, what First would I do? First you have to deaccelerate this. So you go right to either uh, there. Up to the idle position. Then now you can apply the brakes. And this is the train this is, brake. This is the train brake. When you are applying the brakes, right. this pressure is reduced. See. Right. Initially it was up to 5 kg. Now it has come down to 4 kg. 4 kg. Means it, you are applying a brake of 1 kg. Right. It's all pretty intense. I must keep an eye on the speed. Another train coming the other way. So it's, it's pretty constant, the things you have to do. You're not just sitting here. Because you're not steering, you know, you don't have to do steering, but you have to kind of really keep an eye on what's going on all the time. We're on idle. Everything's good. That is really difficult. That isn't... It, it felt really simple to start with until it got really difficult, and then it proved to be very difficult. Man. I'm beginning to understand quite how much there is to learn and why it takes 12 years to qualify as a passenger train driver. Well, that was my first go in the simulator, and it might have looked really easy, you know, just sit in there, pull a couple of levers, sound the horn, off you go. But it requires an enormous amount of concentration and focus. There's so many things going on when you're a train driver. I did get to have a go on my own and eventually have a go in a real locomotive, and that's coming up in the next program. But right now, here at CST Long Distance Departure Concourse, you can see that the time has just gone 3 o'clock in the afternoon. There, up on the departure board, are all the trains that are leaving in the next couple of hours. Ryan, all around me are people waiting for the trains. Now, they arrive here hours and hours early. All sorts of people. And they arrive here early because they want to make sure they get a seat on the trains. There's a bit of a rush when the train comes in. And all these people are going all over India. Some really, really long journeys they're going to be going on. They're going to visit relatives, friends and family. There's some people on business trips. There's people on religious pilgrimages and they're all waiting in here in the noise and chaos of CST it's absolutely extraordinary and over and above all this noise and movement there is this constant supply of announcements and they are coming from the announcer's office which is up there everyone up here is hard at work making sure the passengers have all the information they require for their trains this here is the all-important train management system it's a live link from the control room. They're seeing exactly what they're seeing in the control room. We've got platforms number 18 all the way to 11. And these red lines denote that there is a train in the platform. This one has just set off. This is Sushma. She has the all-important job of making the announcements. I will let you into a little secret. They're pre-recorded. So let's see how we make one go live. So Sushma G, please show me how you punch in some numbers and do what you do. Every train has other than number. They are feed in the PC only. We just feed that number. One one four no, zero. No, one six three eight you went down. That is Mumbai Kanyakumari Express. Okay, so yeah. basic wait one second, don't press that button. Let's explain it. One six three eight it one. Went down. That is the number the corresponding number is on the board outside in the departures lounge so all the passengers can see it. It says Kanyakumari Express is due, due to depart from platform 9 at 15.45. Kanyakumari is right at the tip of India, the very bottom point. So why don't we make it go live? Let's press that this button. This is Fred. Thank you. down Mumbai Kanyakumari Express. Every announcement is made in English, Hindi and the local language Marathi. Kanyakumari Express leave from platform number nine at uh, three forty five. When you're down on the platform it's very difficult to